Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on learning JavaScript for digital tabletop game and web development. In the previous video, we took a look at creating our integrated development environment, which is comprised of a command line interface, a code editor, such as what we're looking at right now, which I'm using Visual Studio, and also, most importantly, installing Node.js as our JavaScript runtime. We log to the console this simple string called hello world. And in this video, we're going to talk about what is a string and um, the different data types that we might encounter in our JavaScript journey, as well as setting up variables and understanding how they're used in programming. So let's talk about variables first. If I create a, an empty line before this console.log line, I can write var x equals hello world and then end that with a semicolon. What I've done here is called declaring a variable and assigned the string hello world to it. Let's discuss each one of those things in turn. If I want to have something that I can reuse over and over again throughout my code, I might create a variable and that variable can be called pretty much anything. I could call it var y equals hello world. I could call it var hello world equals hello world. I get to choose what the name of that variable is, but each of these three variables, they all have uh, essentially the same functionality and they're all, uh, we've assigned the same string to each one of them. There are some restrictions uh, about what you can name your variables. For example, you can't name your variable var var. That would be kind of weird and uh, and um, uh, kind of circular, like a snake eating its tail. You can't call it var console because that's a, a term that is already used by um, JavaScript. Um, but so there are some limitations and you can look those up. It's not really that important that we discuss them at this point in time. But in general, you can name variables what you like and they help you uh, store information or store data in some way. One of those data types is called a string. And a string is in general, anything in between quotation marks, um, like we have hello world here. If you have a sentence or a word or even a paragraph that you want to store in a variable, we'd say that you're storing a string um, or you're assigning a string to that variable. In this case, our string is hello world. Instead of very, very y being hello world, we could say very y equals 10 instead. That means that we're assigning an integer um, or a, uh, a whole number to um, the y variable. Or we could say var z is equal to true. That's another data type. Uh, a true or false um, variable is called a Boolean, um, which is basically means it can be true or false. So those are three different data types that we can use in JavaScript. Um, hello world is a string and 10 is an integer and uh, true or false is a, is a Boolean. And uh, each one of those is a valid data type that we're assigning to a variable. In some other pro pro langu programming languages, th this will be done differently. Um, so you should know that. And in some uh, specific programming languages, um, which are called statically typed programming languages, you'll have to declare what type of uh, data it is um, as you're assigning the variable. That's called static typing versus um, what JavaScript is, that's a, it's called a dynamically typed language. And in fact, I think that's gonna be your first homework assignment, is to look up static versus dynamic typing languages, specifically within the context of JavaScript. And you'll learn more than you ever wanted to know about compiling, and um, I, I think it would just be a really good um, background for you to have, but it's not exactly relevant to our tutorial series, so we're not gonna talk about it right now more than what we already have. Um, you can write var, uh, for to declare a variable, but it is uh, somewhat um, common to see someone to write let x equal hello world instead. And that, for our purposes right now, has essentially the same functionality. When we start talking about scope and different things, we, we might change some of this stuff up, but right now we're just saying let x equal hello world. And we can see that this is working by, instead of saying console log hello world, we just say console log x. 
Now I'm going to go back into my um, my command line interface, and I'm going to type in node uh, log.js. I want node to, to run my script. And I see, hello world, which is great. That just means that it's worked properly, and we've um, successfully stored the string hello world into uh, x. Cool. Well, let's do a little bit more work here now that we're getting comfortable with it. Let's say let y equals 5. And let's say console.log x plus y. Save my file. Type in node log.js, or oftentimes in your command line interface, you can just hit the up arrow key and it'll um, uh, bring to the fore whatever you most recently typed. And it'll say, hello world, five. Great. So I've successfully um, logged to the console both a string and an integer. Maybe I want to say, see how it says hello world and then five right after it maybe I'll say X plus and then I'll create a uh, quotation mark and a space and another quotation mark and then plus so I'm saying um, I want you to log to the console X plus and then this well, this is actually a string here it's just an empty space plus Y save it run my script again and I'll see hello world space five great that just means that I can, uh, in JavaScript, I can log to the console multiple different things and um, and even different data types. Um, and uh, that works just great all, to, all together. Awesome. Well, let's make this a little bit more complex. Let's say that um, let z equals true. And in our console log, we'll say x plus uh, empty space plus y plus empty space plus z. And log it to the console. And it says, hello world, space 5, space true. That's great. We're, we're making a lot of progress here. But we're seeing that we're able to log to the console three different data types. What's important here to see is that I can remove uh, the spaces in between my pluses and my variables. Run the same script and I see the same functionality here. But it's somewhat of a best practice to keep the right amount of spacing in between everything um, so that your code is more readable um, and uh, that will help you uh, in the long run with your with uh, parsing through hundreds of lines of code and being able to sift through it as necessary. One more thing, let's talk about comments. If I go like this and I say um, two forward slashes, then I make this line of code a comment, which means that as the um, as the code is being interpreted, it's going to skip over that line and, and know that, that that comment is only for my reading eyes only. It's not actually have any bearing on the code. It's not gonna have any bearing on the code. And I press save. I run my, um, my script and I get an error. It says Z is not defined. That just means that I'm, I'm referencing a variable that is no longer defined in my script. Um, I've uh, commented out this line and so, um, Node doesn't know what Z is or what I'm trying to do with it. Similarly, if I have a forward slash and a star after it or an asterisk, it will comment out everything that follows um, those two symbols until I write a asterisk followed by a forward slash. And we can see that these two lines are now commented out and that's how you do multi-line comments. So if I save and I say node log.js, I'll see that now y is not defined. And it doesn't complain about z because the way that at least node does this is it goes sequentially from line to line. So it throw it, it's said to throw me an error um, that it doesn't know what y is because we haven't declared it. It's within our comment. 
Um, but it hasn't even gotten to Z yet because it stops right at Y and it says, hold on a minute, mister. You, uh, you haven't told me what Y is, um, so you better fix that. So we're going to fix that just by deleting these symbols, saving, and run it again. Hello world, five is true. So great. That's a, a really basic introduction to what variables are. We're going to continue in the next video by looking at functions and how to create reusable code that we can use over and over again. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you. If it has, please uh, like it and subscribe to my channel. I'd also love for you to check out my books and games at entromancy.com or nightpathpub.com slash entromancy and uh, help me to get the word out about them. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.